To save fuel, it automatically shuts the engine when you're idling. And restarts it the moment you're ready to move. How refreshing. A car that dislikes burning fuel as much as you do. The all-new Focus with Auto Start Stop. Seeing to them as fast as you can is all that matters. With Aviva, your family will have fast access to more hospitals and scan centers than any other insurer. Switch your family's health cover now and save up to €648. Euro. The country grows into the image of the people, and the people grow into the likeness of the country, till to the soul's geographer, each becomes a symbol of the other. Here in the southwest is a land that for generations was tended with an infinity of energy and skill by a people to whom every field and tree and rock and stream had its own being. A people who knew the land because they wooed it intimately with hand labor, with the spade and the fork and the reaping hook and the scythe. A world that except in fragments has gone unchronicled and unmirrored that has fallen over the cliff of silence. You will find a few insights about it in Canon Sheehan. At five o'clock in the morning, they were in the fields, bending down over the sickle and the scythe. Some of the old men told me that the first day of the harvest, their left arms were swollen up to the shoulders. This is a land that grew old without maturing. The images that mold you are potent yet insubstantial, endlessly changing, leaving the questing mind no solid ground. The light, even in midsummer, is diffused and rarely constant. In the course of a single day, it shows a myriad faces, and the land is kindred, varying so subtly in scape of earth and rock and tree that a few fields from your own house you may feel a stranger. 
and there are no seasons. The cards of the weeks are shuffled, and the spades and clubs of autumn and winter fall on the table, mixed with the hearts and diamonds of spring and summer. And because there are no seasons, you are snared by time. In winter, you look towards spring. It comes, but so raggedly mixed with winter that you are hardly aware. And by the time you are aware of summer, you are approaching the longest day. Soon there will be a subtle diminishing. The invisible wheel once more turns imperceptibly down until you see the eclipsed moon above the sheaves of harvest. And people say to one another, where did the summer go? And a town grows in the same unsolid way, less a town than lines of houses on the sides of roads, conveying at once an air of age and impermanence, like a frontier settlement, surviving when the country has all been mapped. Oh, no, I... Yeah. No, more, no. He'll go on, I want to break this man's water. No, no. no. Go on, with the, no, no with the the pound, no. no. Well, I'll give no more. Come back in, Matthew. Come back. No, Matthew. Twenty-eight. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Come on, so I'll give you the theatre packet and I'll finish it here now, boy. And always in the quiet land, there is the excitement of power, the fascination with that which is stronger than man himself and which he only darkly understands. The cow is the countryman's wife, the horse is his mistress. You'll be in a pub on a fair night and you will meet some man still holding the halter and rope off a colder filly he has sold. And after a few glasses, he will confide, I am aware with horses. I don't know how it is. I always had it. Some people can make no handy home at all. I suppose it's a matter of understanding. And on days when horses are gathered together at fair or mating or inspection, you will see men that never owned a rood of ground wrapped in the Freemasonry. On all the faces you will see the dream. It is their poetry, their bridge into the mysterious. Well, I want to mark, I want to walk. The pony walk down the road down now. Walk down the road and come back again. Don't go too far. Ah, the blood, they will say to you. The drop of blood. A horse is nowhere without it. And the thoroughbreds, far from their Arabian home, far from the long and level sands and the chanting of the Koran, articulate the epics of this embodied poetry. Here, in a season of calm weather, though inland far we be, our souls have sight of that immortal sea that brought us hither. The people here do not go down to the sea in Kuruks, but it is always close to their awareness. You come to a summit on the road and the sea is in view, always sudden, even when expectant. You look at its face, seeking signs, for it is the Chancellor of the Exchequer whence comes the weather. You are used to its harbingers, the gulls coming inland before a great storm, the distant, half-imagined voice of spring tides, the fish that will suddenly congregate in the estuaries, sensing that the rivers will soon grow with rain. The sea is near and yet distant, its power less imminent than its romance. The faint flashing of a lighthouse deepens the night, but the land and the bog and the river are your earthly domain. In the graves at Kilmorna, 
Canon Sheehan writes about the homecoming of Miles Cogan, the Fenian, as the train bringing him from Cork comes out of the tunnel and he looks at the places he hasn't seen for years. Then the loneliness of the Irish landscape smote him and sank his spirit steeple. The long receding fields, the absence of human habitations, the miserable ruins of mud cabins and the more melancholy remains of crumbling abbeys and castles and above all, that melancholy atmosphere that seems to hang down over Ireland even on a summer's day. There is the loneliness of a land where life has not yet come, and there is the loneliness where life teemed and has now ebbed. Before the famine, this was a land of small holdings, cultivated by a people whose passion for the soil was so intense because it meant the difference between life and death. The famine to many was like a pledge broken, and great numbers were to leave for America and turn their back on the soil forever. Canon Sheehan tells of being approached by a woman after a station breakfast. Give Mary your blessing, Father. She is going to America next week. My heart sinks down into my boots. America. America. Draining the lifeblood of Ireland. All that is fair and beautiful and healthy going, and all that is old and decrepit and imbecile left behind. And in a land where life has ebbed, it is the past that predominates. And in Ireland, the two great creators of drama are time and death. We lack the ability to fertilize the present moment. We depend on the backward glance to clean away the inessential. One remembers what Thomas Hardy said, that at the graveside of even the humblest man, you see his life as dramatic. It is as if we are eternally questing, seeking for a key, a door. there are new births, there are long and bright avenues. Youth is still under a warm roof. <laughs> Always there is the longing to capture the fleeting moment and to hold it in your hands. People will look at photographs and wonder why familiar scenes are suddenly strange when seen in a mirror. Don't be clouding there and talking about something. Good morning, you've been a bit of a tough one. God bless you, how are you? Are you well? Are you from this confirmation today? Sister. You're a brother and sister, you know, In the store? In the store. And how old are your brother and sister? There's one of them, 13. 13, oh, good. Larry's mother over. That's it. Good morning, I'm dead. 4 o'clock, you need a clock, but that is famous circus and zoo in the town today. Being your talent from all parts of the world, the circus is now in town today. Got this famous circus in town today. Hey, bring it along that side there. All right. Yeah, I'll give you a push on it. Oh, I'll give you a push on it. Hey, look at that. Very good. You know, Childhood is especially precious in a land that has no outback, where there are no great lakes or forests, no places wherein might roam the capacity for wonder.
And always, there is the hunger to rise above the bonds that bind us to the clay. There is the obsession with greatness. And in this society, even in the machine age, when people talk of a great man, they are thinking of the primeval virtues, strength and endurance. Well, I want to do it in Dopus. That's two days. Give me two days. That's strong, damn. Good man. How do you know that? Where do you want to go? I don't know where to go. I'll take another one. How do you know where to go? How do you know where to go? How do you know where to go? I'll take another one. There is no outback, but there is the moorland. It is speckled with infrequent habitations, yet is still a non-human world. Its life is its own. The heather, the tiny violets, the little larks that on a summer's day are like barometers for telling the weather by their climbing and descending. There is the bog cotton, loneliest of plants. And in the evening, the curlew and the hare come out and people working late feel like intruders. Inland people always call it the mountain. The name is an index that it is more than turf country. It is also a place wherein one can refresh the spirit. We all need such places, so that your soul may know the yeast of strangeness, and that you may see your daily round in a mirror. keeps secrets even from its intimates. Water is both the origin of life and its sustainer. Loaves and fishes are their own miracle. Eternity lives in elemental tasks. It is today and it is Genesis. It is a moorland estuary and it is Galilee. Always there is the heightened sense of being that begins inside the tavern door, where all labors and pleasures are distilled, the death of each day's life, chief nourisher in life's feast. No, I tell you why. Why not? My neighbors wouldn't stand it. No, but your pocket wouldn't make you stand it. And my pocket might stand it. Oh, wait a minute. I could have done. I could have done. Well, I said, I hope. I don't know, but I think to be carried that's coming. I could have thought to go there. But I, 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 could never, I could never stay in a, in, 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 um, in, in a proxy to see Caribbean. Caribbean by who? I need to. You're a stone of woman. You're a better picket at home. Who's going to be? Who's going to be? Who's going to be? For a pool on a cannabis table where you can find your troubles on a high flood wheel in a pool. And the fairs and the wetness and hide our minds and troubles. days of hand labor, words for the great anodyne. That rich legacy isn't yet all spent, but a new generation is growing, less needy of verbal ladders, less articulate, but more bold, bearing seeds of the new Ireland, where you fear neither priest nor gunman, and where every lad has his lass. The village once had a warm roof over it. It was alive with the sounds and smells of its people and its crafts. Now it is diminished, less a center of life than of loneliness. 
its people seek the capital of their world elsewhere. And as life contracts, it becomes more hidden. The old energy yields to the dreariness of village morality. There is the Puritan fear without the Puritan faith. The village is a symbol of a broken world that grew old but never matured. The soul hungers for a house around it, for a roof, for walls. Yes, then that's all right. Yes, 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 and always there is the questing, the searching for your own horizons. You long to rise above the common clay, to walk the tight rope between glory and humiliation. The ball is the wheel of all wheels. The white-lined rectangle is the battlefield. Your laurel reeds are a few words of commendation. Your ultimate honor that somebody refers to you as the footballer. You have been tested and found not wanting. You are counted among the warriors of the tribe. Still, the blood is strong, the spirit bright, although the mold has been broken. 
The life now is like a great river thwarted by a rockfall, seeking new outlets and diminished into streams. And the old mirrors too are broken. We look for new, wherein we might see our own reality. As the tailor of Guganbara said, imagination was not given to us to make the worst of a good world, but to make the best of a middling job. And we search for a key, a door. The wheels keep turning. The dance goes on. And the Brennan brothers are back, and their first project is a B&B that needs to be dragged into the 21st century. Expect sparks to fly in at your service on Sunday night at half past eight. Still to come tonight here on RTE One, there's comedy from Tim Vine and music from Kathy Davy and the Dublin Gospel Choir in the Late Late Show at 9.35. But stay with us now, the RTE News at nine is on the way.